So in this video we're going to kind of extend our programming capabilities and the tools we can use to program a bit further. And we're going to look at two very, very powerful um, tools or codings that can be used. And these are what's called timers and counters. Okay, and we use these a lot um, in industry. And you know, from knowing how to use these, we can do quite, um, quite useful things. So if we want to add in a timer, we go in here under timer operations. And again, if this whole instruction um, kind of toolbar isn't open, you'll see it just up here on the right. You can hide it and extend it from there. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look at two types of timers, okay? We're just going to focus on these, this timer on delay and this timer off delay. The rest we'll cover in, you know, as we get there. But for what we want to start off is we want to start off with a timer on and a timer off. So there are two types of timers. And the way we've got to think about it is this. A timer on delay will turn an output on after a period of time. So if you imagine we're turning on, say, a buzzer after five seconds, that's what a timer on delay will do. It will wait five seconds, and then it will turn on your buzzer. A timer off delay is slightly different. What it does is it turns an output off after a period of time. So let's say again we're turning on, we're triggering our buzzer. The buzzer comes on immediately. We count for say five seconds and then the buzzer cuts off. So that's an off delay timer and that's an on delay timer. So let's see how we set these up. Well again we can drag and drop these into um, our ladders. And what it does is it allows us to name um, and create what we call a data block. Now don't worry too much about this, but basically um, a timer has a certain amount of data associated with it, in the sense, you know, it's counting um, for a period of time. So it's got data and it needs to save that somewhere in the, in the computer and in the PLC. So that's just what we're doing here. We're creating that a place for it to store it. So first thing it really asks you to do is give it a name. So we'll say a timer... Um, and we might call it 5S, so for a five second timer. And we just say yes, automatic, add it in, and it will drop our timer in, and that's what it looks like. Now notice this idea of a network. We've moved on to um, a new network down here. And you know, you can think of networks just as ways of organizing your code. In the sense you can have, and it doesn't just mean you're moving on to a new rung in the ladder, you can still add in um, another rung down here, and you could still put in inputs and put it out to an output. So you can still have multiple um, rungs of the ladder in the network. But you know what it does is it helps organize our code a bit better. Um, so say maybe you're using the first um, network to reset your system, and then you know this is this ne next network is going to run through a first batch of um, sequences or something like that. We can organize it through the idea of this network. Um, so don't and again you can or you can just use networks as to show or to s separate out your ladder rungs. If you want to just keep one rung in one network, that's completely fine. But anyway, back to the timer. So we've created this timer block, and what it does is it gives us ultimately four ports that we can connect into. IN stands for input. So what is going to trigger our timer? Well, let's say we're going to use an input that's going to be called, um, well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the stop button here, right? So our stop button is going to trigger our timer. What is our timer going to turn on? It's an on delay timer, so after delay, what is it eventually going to turn on? So it needs to be an output. Q stands for an output. So we're going to say we're going to turn on our buzzer, all right? Now PT asks for what we call the preset time. So how long is this timer actually going to last for? And how we do that, we type in time, then we got to give the hash key, and then we type in how long it's going to last for. So if you type in 5 seconds, 5S means 5 seconds, you type in 5M, 5 minutes, uh, MS, you know, milliseconds, um, and it'll put it in blue there to make sure it understands it. So that's basically everything we need to run the timer. We're telling it when the timer to turn on. So turn the timer on when the stop button's pressed. After a period of five seconds, turn on the output. There is another port here called ET. Uh, and we don't need to get into too much at this moment in time. Um, I wouldn't worry about it. Siemens, I believe, 
does let you leave this blank if you didn't want to connect anything to, into it or put anything in. But some compilers, um, like the likes of Codasys, want you to put in um, a value in here um, so that it's connected up. So some compilers force you to put something in there. So it's a good habit just to type in something. Now ET stands for elapsed time. Uh, and ultimately, it's telling you currently, in that moment of time, what count the timer is on. So once we start to stop, once we press the stop button and the timer starts counting, it's counting up to five seconds. So you'll see this kind of change in one, two, three, four, five. It's telling you the current value at that moment in time of um, the timer. And really where we use that is if we have HMI displays or and we want to kind of give out this information to someone that maybe it's very long uh, time wait and we want to kind of have a visual output display of it, we could use this this piece here to show us that. Um, for the moment, I like to put in a good habit of just, you know, putting in um, a variable just to store so it can be stored somewhere. So let's say we call it um, the timer count actually. So that makes a bit of sense to count what the timer is on. Um, I just press enter into that. Now it gives me a red um, underline because it's not defined. So we'll go and define it and basically just accept whatever it's giving you. It's telling you, okay, here's a free memory address we can store it into and we'll store it in there. Okay, so we're just basically accepting whatever the software gives to us for this moment in time. Now later on we'll look at how we manipulate that and use that, but for the moment we don't really need to be worried about this part, but it's a good habit to set it up. The main thing you want to look at is your input, your preset time and your queue, because that's going to turn on your timer. So what's going to happen here? We push uh, the stop button, it'll allow the timer to time up. Once it reaches five seconds, it will turn on my buzzer, so an on delay. Now a couple of things to note with timers. Timers, the input must be constantly powering the timer. So if the stop button is pressed, I need to keep that stop button pressed until it counts to five, and then the buzzer will operate. As soon as I release the power from the stop button or turn off that input, the timer loses its count and it goes back to zero. So if we only had the stop button pressed for three seconds and we let go, this would reset back to zero and the buzz would never have come on. If we keep it timed up to five seconds, the buzz will come on and then if we let our finger go, the timer resets to zero and the buzzer turns off. So you may need to use an idea of a latch there to keep power generated to the input and then to keep your buzzer on for maybe a certain amount of time or whatever else you want to do with it until something's reset. Okay, so just to keep that in mind with a timer. The tee off operates in a very similar way. Again, it'll ask you um, to type in something, so you could call it maybe your um, three second and then maybe off um, to represent an off delay timer. And again, you have an input, um, so we could again have our, let's just use the stop button again. Um, the stop button can trigger it. The output that we're going to turn on is the buzzer. Preset time. Again, remember it's time, hash, and then whatever you want to put in, so three seconds. And then just for good habit, I'm just going to put in um, timer count off. Just to put something in there. Again, it'll give me an error, and I'm just going to define it and put it wherever it wants me to store it. Okay, and we're turning on our buzzer. Okay, so this is our off delay timer. So again, what happens is, as soon as the stop button's hit, it will energize the buzzer straight away, and then once three seconds elapse, it will cut the power to the buzzer, and that's a timer off delay. Again. This needs to be fully energized for this to count up and turn off. Um, so latching can be important there. So it's good to play around with those and see how they work and to fully kind of see, depending on what input you're using, if you're using a push button, you'll need to keep it kind of latched on. If you're using a toggle switch, well, that's going to kind of latch itself off or latch itself on um, just like a detent switch would. So that is, is timer. So hopefully that makes some sense to you. Um, do play with it. How you manipulate it yourself, you know, can give it extra capabilities. Um, but to operate in a very similar way, just with a slight difference, 
and they've got very similar inputs and um, connections there.